Lesson 48 is on fractional parts of a number and fractional equations. Now we've already discussed fractional parts of a number and this lesson will just be a little more detail on that. We discussed that back in lesson 18. If you need to review that, you might want to do that. Recall in lesson 18 we talked about to introduce fractional parts of a number we said think about half of 50. You know that half of 50 is 25 and we could write half of 50 is 25. Now we could think about that in terms of an equation by just saying 1 half times 50 equals 25. And notice the similarities here. That of part, we're doing half of the total. And when we hear that word of, that tells us about multiplication. The is, that kind of lines up with the equal sign. Half of 50 equals or is 25. Half times 50 or half of 50 equals 25. We could consider what I have highlighted as a fractional equation. And what we'll be doing here is setting up some fractional equations. And sometimes it's a good idea to have a pattern of some sort to help you figure out what steps you need to take to solve a problem. And let's just think about a formula that we could think of that would be a pattern that we could always use to help us solve these fractional equation problems. For example, we always start with a fraction of a certain quantity is another quantity. And we could say f there times of equals is. We could think of that. f times of equals is. And that might help us to think about the pattern that's developed when we multiply a fraction by a certain quantity. For example, look at practice problem A. What fraction of 80 is 30? Well, think about our formula. F times of equals is. And there's always going to be three parts to these problems. And they'll give us two of those three parts in the problem. We need to figure out that third. What are we trying to figure out here? We're trying to figure out what fraction. So we're trying to figure out the F part. Fraction of 80. So we say times 80 is 30 equals 30. What fraction of 80 is 30? And we just use our division rule here. We can divide both sides by 80. that cancels on the left side and we'd end up with 30 over 80 which would just be 3 eighths. We can always check our work anytime we're working with an equation like this where we are solving it we can check our work 3 eighths of 80 is 30 we could do 3 eighths times 80 and we would see that that does indeed equal 30. Let's do another one 4 thirds of what number is one-fifth. Let's think about our formula. F times of equals is. We'll use that as a pattern to help us think about how to set this problem up. They always give us two of the three parts for this formula. Four-thirds of what number is one-fifth. So we have four-thirds, that's our fraction, F, of what number? We don't know the of part of this, so we'll just say times wn for what number is one-fifth or equals one-fifth. So we're just saying wn, that's like a variable. We don't know what that is equal to. We go ahead and multiply both sides by the reciprocal of four-thirds or three over four. That cancels on the left. And on the right, we can't reduce anything, so we end up with 3 twentieths. That's what that number is, 3 over 20. 4 thirds of 3 twentieths is 1 fifth. We can always check our work. We can just think about that in our head. Multiply 4 thirds by 3 twentieths. The 3's would cancel, and we'd end up with 4 over 20, which is 1 fifth. 
Now, I'm doing these problems a little bit different than they do them in the book if you're following along in the lesson in the book at all, or if you read the lesson in the book before you put the CD in. I think the way that I'm doing these is a little bit more descriptive and self-explanatory than the way they do it in the book. This is the way it will be explained in the Algebra 1 book as well, so that will keep things consistent for you as far as the explanation of this type of problem. Let's do one more. 3 elevenths of 81 is what number? We see it's a fractional part of a number problem, so let's just go ahead and write down our formula, f times of equals is. We use that as a pattern to help us think about the different parts of this fractional problem. It helps us think about how to set up an equation based on that problem. And we see 3 elevenths of 81. So 3 elevenths, that's our fraction of, that's the 81. 3 elevenths of 81, or 3 elevenths times 81, equals or is what number? We don't know that part. But the what number part is already by itself. We don't have to do any multiplication or division rule to solve for what number. We just go ahead and multiply 3 by 81. There's nothing we can simplify here. And we would end up with 243 over 11. And we just leave our answer as an improper fraction. 243 over 11. Use that formula that I have highlighted. Use that as a tool to help you set up an equation and solve for the missing part in these fractional part of a number problems. Okay, well that's all for lesson 48.